geared in. Like he came in and he popped it. And there's nothing he you does. Know, like I don't think there's anything he could have done to stop it. But it's it's really hard. Like to go from 2150 and then go 22 in the final is really hard. It's really really hard. And I kind of knew that. I'm like, okay, I use the least amount of effort humanly possible in the, in the qualifying to get there. I think I was six or something. So I was like, okay, at least I'm giving my chance, give myself a chance to improve upon where I started in a way. And, you know, I did, and it's about pretty much what my average is from the year. But I was like, okay, I have that puncher's chance. You know, I, I can still push the ball well. If I get in that right position in that final, there's a chance I, I, it could go 22. So that's what I was hoping for. I never hit that position. I mean, I had to think of one, one more throw. I thought I hit it well, but it just didn't happen. And that's just a chance I got to take. So, so based on what you said about Ryan the other day, you said it was a mind game. It was. It was. It was, it was total. <laughs> you said you didn't want to play mind games with him out there, but that was a way to well, maybe get in there. Well, you think? I mean, Ryan is a new cat. Yeah. He's he's really plugged into social media and stuff. So he he definitely be watching that and seeing what's going on because you know when when I threw that's that's what Christian did that's what Adam did you know it's giving them that false sense of security that you know what oh you know I don't have it you know look at my qualifying and I played it up when I was talking to him today look at my qualifying it's 2042 I just I don't think I'm gonna do anything <laughs> But so you're trying to psych him out? I'm so trying to psych him out so that when I got there, so, it's, so this is the thing. So I was like thinking, within the th first three throws, if I go out there and let's say I go 2180, I get him. Because you notice that after his first throw, he didn't improve. I, I, as, a, as a professional thrower, I watch everything that Ryan does. And I'm looking, you know, how, how do you beat, because I'm not going to lie, there is nothing I can do to beat Ryan Whiting when he's good. Nothing I can be. He's, he's bigger, stronger, faster, probably more intelligent. You know, he's got everything on me. Why didn't he improve after the first throw? Or was he? Uh, you know, it's a rotating thing, I think. I, it, it's, it, but you really it, thought he was going to win, is, right? Is, I mean, even though you're trying to psych him out, if you had to no, bet your money. If I had to put my money on it, I'd still say Ryan was going to win. Right. But it's, you know, I just, I, 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 I look at the sport and I look at what all the best throwers have done. You know, John Gadita won on his first throw. Adam Nelson won the, won the meet on his, on, his, on his first or second throw. I won the meet on my second throw, 22, meet, 22 meters. Like, if you don't get it done with those first two throws as a rotator, the meet sucks you in, and it's really hard to improve. Is that just the world or any meet? I think any meet. Even Olympic Games, all of it. For rotators. I'm talking about gliders. I'm talking about rotators. Because you think, you know, you're out there for an hour and change. It's really, really hard to then all of a sudden find it. So I knew after those first three throws, it was like, it's going to take a miracle for me to find it. So I did everything I could, but it's very rare to find a rotator that can go from, and I think the other person who did it was Randy Barnes in the 96 Olympics. He went from just average to throwing, you know, 70 plus feet. He's probably been the only guy to be able to do that. Everybody else, you know, if you're as a rotator, you win it within the first three. So when, he, when he's going, he's 57, fouled his second throw, third throw, is just, uh, I'm like, okay. If there's, I just, if I can get it done, you know, because I was after him after the third throw, if I could find that throw in the third round, I could have potentially won because I knew as the meet goes on, it's just going to kill him. It's going to drain his energy. And it drains what happened. Every, we didn't improve on any of the rest of our throws from the fourth round to the fifth, sixth round. It just kills us. And a lot of delays, you got to wait for people to do ceremonies. It's just this whole process just sucks the energy out of our team. Because yeah, the normal meet's so. much quicker, right? Huh? Like a diamond league meet's over in... They're over in 45 minutes. Yeah. I mean, you, you, like you look at the results here, and, but let's say you did the World Championships the same way you did a diamond league, the results would be completely different. Because it's a lot faster. We don't stop for practically anything. There aren't any, there aren't any you know, warrior ceremonies for diamond league meets. You know, we can get into a rhythm, and because it's packed in so tight, it makes it a lot easier for us to, to win. It really does. It makes it's hard for a glider to beat us in those because it's like we get in a rhythm and we keep that rhythm from throw one to throw six. It's over so fast. If you think we we warm out outside, it takes us almost two hours to do an entire competition. Essentially, it, it's it's really hard. I mean, I, I, maybe it can be done, but I haven't figured out that mystery. The reason I won in, in uh, Osaka was because that meet was fast. They did they had like one race going on. The thing was like four meter hurdles. That meet was done in an hour, and you know by the second throw, I was already winning. All right. Thanks.